Good morning and welcome to worship here at the Pleasant Hill Community Church, United Church of Christ. I'm John Fairless. It's my privilege to serve as the interim minister in this congregation. And wherever you may be watching or listening and whenever you may be hearing these words, it is certainly uh, representative of our heart to say that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And even though we are gathering virtually, we trust that it is the very Spirit of God that is binding our hearts together in the fellowship that is ours in God's love and through Christ our Lord. So I'm happy to see you today. I hope that our sound is taking one more step forward. My thanks to Don for working with us today. Uh, Lyle and I are going to do our very best to project. Thank you to Diana and our singers. What a beautiful prelude, that setting of New Britain. Most of us automatically hear amazing grace, how sweet the sound. And that was a wonderful uh, beginning, uh, pre-prelude to our service today. I hope that that beauty will carry us right on through the rest of this time together and throughout this day and into this week. Welcome to worship. Let's continue now as we open our hearts to God and to one another. We gather to respond to the call of God's love. Thank you. That someone cares enough to share his good news with us. 
May we be compassionate enough to share this divine presence with others. Love, when shared, is not divided, but multiplied. Love, given away, is not diminished, but expanded. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give to you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now, Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming, Forty more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. Again, my thanks to Reverend Lyle Weibel for serving as liturgist today to each of those uh, who are helping to make this service possible. And may God bless the reading and the hearing of God's holy word this day. I can remember as a child playing childhood games like kickball or sometimes freeze tag and later years they learned to play uh, baseball and football and basketball. But I think one of the universal childhood experiences is uh, participating in some sort of game, some sort of activity. It doesn't turn out quite the way you had hoped. I was not a particularly coordinated child when I was young, and I can remember the roller in elementary school uh, letting the ball go, and as it came, I would take a big swipe with my foot, and unfortunately, either the ball would careen off in some um, untoward direction, or I might end up... uh, let's say, gracing the ground with my backside. Boom! And of course, at that moment, with that experience, uh, what would most of us as kids like to have? A do-over. Another chance. 
Let, let me try that again, and hopefully I won't embarrass myself in quite the same way. Well, we are in the season of Epiphany, and today we're continuing this series of Epiphany sermons and services focusing on listening for God's voice, seeing God's light for our way, and choosing our response to God's call in our lives, God's call to our service. Today we come to the story of Jonah, who is also known as the reluctant prophet. And we see that he is given a second chance by God. So that sort of begs the question, I believe, do we ever need that second chance? Could we ever use a divine do-over? You know, it's a really good thing that God doesn't give up on us easily. Most people are familiar or have at least heard about Jonah's experience. The first time God asked him to go and preach to the city of Nineveh. Jonah promptly, upon hearing God's call to go to Nineveh, moved as fast and as far as he could in the other direction. God asked him to go and preach to Nineveh, and Jonah booked passage on a ship bound for Tarshish, which if you were to consult a, the, a map with the world of the Mediterranean, particularly at the time of Jonah, you will see that Nineveh lies on the eastern end of the Mediterranean Ocean, and Tarshish lies on the far western end, almost to what we now call the Strait of Gibraltar, and perhaps he had in mind to just keep going after that. Well, after a storm and Jonah is tossed from the ship, he encounters a whale, right? We know it's a big fish, but Jonah promptly receives an express ride back to the shore of Nineveh, where he apparently gained a whole new perspective on this calling of God. And that's where our reading for today begins. The call came to Jonah a second time to go and preach to Nineveh. I believe that Jonah's whale of a tale is a reminder that God has a place and a part for every one of us in God's good work in the world. God is always at work, and God has always intended good for our world, and we all have a part to play in that. Now, we are not all called to be prophets or preachers, and I say, thank God for that, right? We can't have everyone standing up to proclaim. There are those who must listen and certainly must carry on other important work. Some of us are musicians, like Diana and her team, and bravo for those who enhance our worship with music. Others of us are great at numbers and help to be sure everything adds up in the work of God's church and in God's world, thankfully. Some are great at technology. Others are fantastic at cooking or working with children or standing up for justice by demonstrating in visible places like our courthouse and uh, public squares. Some are great at making phone calls to support those who are experiencing such loneliness during COVID. There are any number of things that we are gifted and talented at. I'm convinced that every single one of us has some talent or gift or ability that God can use in helping us to share the message 
of God's love. For Jonah, it was to bring a message of repentance to the people of Nineveh. For me, my call has brought me to Pleasant Hill, Tennessee. Now, I don't know exactly what your call from God may be, but I do believe that it is something. It is something. Jonah was a bit of a reluctant prophet. He did not really want to give the message that God had given him. But reluctant or not, when he did decide to give it a whirl and go where God asked him to go, and here's one of my favorite theological terms, Shazam! (laughs) It worked. It really worked. I suspect that there are many of you who remember or were at least aware of the work of the evangelist Billy Graham, who for years sponsored large evangelistic campaigns all across the nation and all around the world. Billy uh, always gave sort of a a part of his classic invitation as, as hundreds of you come. And and Billy would wait to see and hope to see and pray to see hundreds of people expressing their desire to be closer to God, to come to know Christ. It was an amazing thing. Well, Brother Billy would truly have been amazed at the results after Jonah finished his message as the scripture text tells us the entire city came and repented and responded to the call of God. As best we can tell at this time, Nineveh probably had a population of 120,000 or so. That's quite a response of people wanting to come to church. And when the people of Nineveh responded and repented and came to God at the preaching of Jonah, a very interesting thing happened. God also repented and came to the people of Nineveh. (laughs) Now what do I mean when I say God repented? Well, you heard the word, sometimes translated relented, sometimes translated repented, sometimes translated God changed God's mind. All of those begin to get at what that word means. It is an old Hebrew word used in this story in verse 10, Naham, which means to heave a sigh, as in relief. (sighs) I'm so glad they listened. I'm so glad I don't have to do what I had intended to do if they didn't listen. God was indeed relieved at the obedience of the Ninevites, and I suppose at the obedience of Jonah. Now, if you were to read the very brief rest of the story, you'll find it there in the book of Jonah, chapter 4, you discover that Jonah wasn't quite as thrilled. He began to pout. He went and sat on the hillside waiting for God to rain down fire and brimstone. Like you did in the old times, God, just burn them up for their sin. Some of us may have heard sermons like that, or we've heard them talked about. Ah, Jonah was indeed a reluctant prophet. But in the Jewish tradition from which this story of Jonah comes, this is known as a teshuvah. It is one element 
of atoning for sin, of making things right. In the Judaism, it's recognized that everyone sins on occasion. We just don't live perfectly, we don't speak perfectly, we don't think perfectly, we do not act perfectly. But this tradition also recognized that people can stop or at the very least minimize those occasions in the future by repenting of our past transgressions. Stop and think and consider we can change our ways. We can change the future. And evidently, we can also change God's mind. There are those times in life when we could all really, really use a second chance. Again, what as kids perhaps we called a do-over. May we seek the grace of God for those reluctant places in our lives and thank God for the opportunity to try again the second time around. Thank you, God for the grace of the do-over. I would like to invite your response to this story, not only as we consider it this day, I hope you will reflect on it in the days to come and throughout the week this week, but we have a printed uh, prayer of confession in the bulletin for today. I hope you've had the opportunity to receive that in email or to download it uh, from our church website. If not, I, I certainly invite you into this time. Like Jonah, sometimes we are reluctant about those with whom God has called us to share. And so for a moment, this prayer of confession asks that God would help us to be responsive to all friends fellow church members, community members, strangers, and even perhaps those with whom we do not agree or that we might even consider our enemies. Let us pray. Holy One, what a blessing and privilege we share here in this sacred space and among this loving community. Like Jonah, we sometimes are jealous of what we share here. We know that others are longing and thirsting for what we know and experience. Forgive us our reluctance to open our doors, open our hearts to others, some who are like us, some not. We repent of our hesitations and unwillingness to witness to those we have considered strangers and even enemies for fear they just might become friends. Amen. Amen. Know that the one who calls us to this place calls us to reconciliation through grace. God will not deny a repentant heart or an open spirit. Know that you are forgiven and walk in the new way that is made known to you in God's love. Amen.
a beautiful tradition that has arisen this year in our congregation is the lighting of a memorial candle. There are many in our own congregation, in our community. We learned this last week of the passing of a long time member of this community, one of the few remaining who were birthed and brought into this world by Dr. May. And we have not had the opportunity to gather to mourn. And so we light this memorial candle for those we have lost, for those who have been lost in our nation and around the world during a tremendous time of pandemic and loss. As we pray today, I invite you to remember in your own heart those who uh, you have compassion for, many who are sick or ailing, many who are facing a time of sorrow. For those who are getting better, we gave thanks this week to learn that grace from our own uh, uh, church community here is improving and is doing better we rejoice and pray today for the new administration in our country. And as always and ever, we are called to pray for our leaders nationally, here in our own community, in our state, and for those around the world. Would you join me in this time, beginning with a moment of silence, and then as we lift our prayers before God. We do thank you, most gracious God, for your call of love, for your patience, and for your compassion. Today, as we remember those who have passed from our midst, we ask your continued comfort on those who mourn that loss. We pray God, for those who continue to face chronic issues of illness, for those who face issues now and even now, especially now, of economic hardship, we pray for our president, for our governor, for our mayor, for all who are in authority as they seek to find ways to help us as citizens of our community and of our nation to find a way through these still dark days. We give you thank for, thanks for the answers to prayer that you have provided, for those who are improving, for those who are feeling stronger, and we give you thanks for this congregation to which you have called us. In the days ahead, help us to continue to listen. Help us to continue to open our eyes and to search for your light. And help us as we respond. May we truly be open to all, to all who are in need of your love. And so hear our prayers as we lift them before you this day. And let us pray together as our Savior has taught us. Our Mother and Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
we have and we do receive much goodness, much grace in our lives. Care and kindness from neighbors, acceptance and encouragement from family, affirmation from God, second chances, do-overs. We also have and we also can give much together through the ministries of the church which continue in spite of the pandemic limiting restrictions that are upon us. Financial support for our congregation and for our ministries throughout the world, sharing our presence and our participation in the life of the church and the community, praying for each other and for all others. As Diana plays the offertory this morning, peace be still. Use these moments to remember and to reflect and to respond in your heads and in your hearts and with your hands. In the midst of changing ways, give us still the grace to praise. Let us pray. Dear God, unite us with each other and all others and with yourself, that through us and through our gifts, your will may be known, your way can be done, through church, our church, and through our Christ. Amen.
Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. The grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.